hey guys what's up so we are going to study class 7th geography and crt and we'll cover it through mcqs and mcqs only and i'll also give a detailed explanation so that you don't need to study your class 7 geography and crt at all and this is presented by me your friend uh, roman saini so what is the objective of this so we are covering all the important concepts of class 7 geography and crt for upsc civil service examination and explain in detailed way as much as possible it will help you to qualify not only mains exam but it will help you in prelims as well because many questions are directly asked from ncrt because it is a government sponsored book and it will also help you to develop the right strategy so that you understand how the mind of the examiner works when it comes to formulating the questions for upsc civil service examination so basically we are trying to do everything which we need to do to cover the class the 7 geography and we'll cover 10 mcqs per lesson and i'll also provide you detailed explanation along with the mcqs so the target audience is civil service aspirants aspirants giving other exams like capf cms cds and other government exams like ssc cgl everyone will be benefited so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so we'll start with our class 7th geography discussion and this is the question 1 to 10 in this and i'll try to cover the entire class 7 geography ncrt so environment is basic life support of all living beings so that statement is 100 percent correct human beings cannot modify natural environment so this statement is wrong answer here is a one only so environment is our basic life support and we can make car mills factories manufacture containers and they are responsible for deforestation degradation and that is why we can modify our environment and we can lead to a lot of degradation as well consider the following statements natural components human made components and human which of the following are components of the environment the humans are also components of the environment so biotic and abiotic two components living means biotic abiotic means dead the answer here is d all of the above so place people things nature that surround any living organism are all components of environment it is a combination of natural and human made phenomenon okay question number three natural environment refers to the biotic and abiotic conditions natural environment refers to biotic and abiotic conditions human environment refers to human activities creation and interaction among human beings answer here is yes both the statements are absolutely correct so biotic components are living organisms existing on the earth that is human animal plants and abiotic components are non-living organisms existing on the earth that is land air water etc question number four lithosphere is land surface yes hydrosphere is domain of water atmosphere blanket of air is around the earth biosphere kingdom of plants and animals so answer is all of the above all these statements are correct so litho litho means land hydro means water atmo means like uh, surroundings bio means life and the, all these statements are correct so answer is d all of the above question number five lithosphere is not a component of environment why it is the hard top layer of the crust of the earth that is made up of rocks and minerals it is also a source of mineral and wealth yes the statements are correct first is wrong lithosphere is very much the component of the environment why will lithosphere not be a component of the environment that is the question so lithosphere is one of the important components of environment others include hydrosphere atmosphere biosphere so yeah so all these statements are correct barring one uh, question number six hydrosphere comprises of only seas and oceans landforms are found over the continents and also on the ocean floors the so answer here is b2 only because hydrosphere comprises of all the source of the body water it can be pond it can be lake it can be sea rivers oceans anything at all okay so answer here becomes b2 only so hydrosphere comprises of various sources of water bodies like rivers lakes seas oceans etc question number seven the atmosphere is thin layer of the air that surrounds the earth it consists of a number of gases yes dust yes water vapor yes everything is there uh, so answer here is c one two three uh, heat is the factor responsible for change in the atmospheric temperature it per se does not contains heat the atmosphere consists of number of gases dust water vapor but not heat okay uh, question number eight the centrifugal force of the earth holds the atmosphere around it okay the changes in the atmosphere produces changes in the hydrosphere and lithosphere yes so answer uh, that is wrong because answer is the gravitational force of the earth not the centrifugal force here and changes in the atmosphere produces the changes in the weather and climate and not directly in the hydrosphere and lithosphere so here statement one is wrong because it has to be the gravitational force of the earth and here it has to be the uh, weather and climate not like hydrosphere 
directly it can happen over long period but not directly question number 9 biosphere is the narrow zone of the earth where hydrosphere lithosphere and atmosphere interact with each other yes all the plants animals and human beings are elements of biosphere yes so answer here is c both one and two both these statements are correct bio means life sphere means part so any part of the earth where life is possible so that is called as the biosphere so it is the narrow zone of the earth where land water air interact with each other to support the life animal kingdom plant together they make the biosphere or the living world okay so answer here becomes c both one and two question number 10 ecosystem is formed by the interaction of all the living organisms with each other and all the living organisms with physical and chemical factors of the environment so here answer is uh, uh, c both one and two both these statements are correct in this context because ecosystem is a system formed by interaction of all the living organisms with each other and with physical and chemical factors of the environment in which they live and all linked by transfer of energy and material okay so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss the question 11 to 20 and they are based on geography class 7 the ncrt which of the following are examples of ecosystem aquarium yes it is an example of artificial ecosystem coral reef is a type of marine ecosystem and biosphere reserve park uh, yes it is also there so answer here is c one two three all of them are examples of ecosystem so ecosystem can be as small as a water drop and it can have a lot of bacteria living inside it etc so ecosystem can be very small and very big question number 12 consider the following statements the uppermost layer of the earth is called crust it is equal to 35 kilometer on continental mass and oceanic floor no it is just 5 kilometer on the oceanic floor uh, beneath the crust is the mantle uh, sorry for the spelling mistake okay and beneath the crust is the mantle again it is M A N T L E. Uh, which extends up to 2900 kilometer that is correct and the innermost layer is the core with a radius of 3500 kilometer so that is also correct so answer is c2 and 3 so it was auto check because of that it happens but the spelling is m a n t l e question number 13 oh continental crust is made up of silica and magnesium that is wrong so continental crust is silica and aluminium cl oceanic crust is made up of uh, sema that is silica and magnesium uh, and core is made up of nickel and iron that is correct Feni. so answer is c3 only so they have reversed the first and second it is also called as knife because of iron and ferrous elements it has very high temperature and pressure question number 14 this the crust forms only 0.5 percent of the volume of the earth yes it is made up of various type of rocks that is also current correct answer is c both one and two so any natural mass of mineral matter that makes up the earth's crust is called a rock and there are three types of three major types of rocks igneous rocks sedimentary rocks metamorphic rocks and again sorry for this the mantle and core consist of 16 percent and 83 percent respectively of the volume of the earth question number 15 igneous rocks are formed when molten silica cools and become solid that is wrong that is molten magma cools and become solid these rocks are called as primary rocks yes they are called the primary rocks answer is b2 only so igneous rocks are formed when molten magma cools and becomes solid there are two types of igneous rocks intrusive rocks and extrusive rocks uh, basalt rocks are extrusive igneous rocks and decan plateau is made up of basalt rocks so that statement is uh, uh, correct granite is an example of intrusive igneous rock so that is also correct answer is c both one and two so when the molten molten lava comes on the earth's surface it cools down very very fast becomes solid and igneous extrusive rocks are made in such a way and sometimes it cools down deep inside in the earth's crust then intrusive and igneous rocks are made so basic basic difference in sedimentary rocks the remains of the dead plants and animals are trapped that is correct igneous and metamorphic rocks can be changed into sedimentary rocks answer is c both one and two so remains of dead plants and animals they are trapped in fossils fossils are found in sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks under great heat and pressure change into igneous rocks okay and igneous rocks uh, can be converted into sedimentary rocks and igneous and sedimentary rocks can change into metamorphic rocks under great heat and pressure for example clay change into slate and limestone into marble question number 18 with reference to sedimentary rocks which statement is correct the loose sediments are compressed and hardened to form the sedimentary rocks that is correct they can change into igneous rocks but cannot change into metamorphic rocks this is wrong 
दीज रॉक्स मे कंटेन फॉसिल्स दैट इज़ करेक्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट आंसर हेयर इज ए वन एंड थ्री सो दे कैन बी चेंज वाइस वर्सा ओके दे कैन बी ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू बोथ मेटामॉर्फिक रॉक्स एंड एग्नेस रॉक्स क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइनटीन मिनरल्स आर नॉट फाउंड नेचुरली नहीं यार दे आर फाउंड नेचुरली दे हैव सर्टन फिजिकल एंड केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज करेक्ट दे आर मेड अप ऑफ रॉक्स आर मेड अप ऑफ डिफरेंट मिनरल्स दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट सो आंसर इज बी टू एंड थ्री सो मिनरल्स आर नेचुरली अकरिंग सब्सटेंसेज विच हैव सर्टन फिजिकल एंड डेफिनेट केमिकल कंपोजिशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल कोल नेचुरल गैस पेट्रोलियम एंड लाइम स्टोन क्वारजाइट ग्रेनाइट कैल्सिटाइट दे आर सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ मिनरल्स विच आर फाउंड इन रॉक्स लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर द डे इज मिनरल्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू ह्यूमन काइंड दे आर यूज इन फॉलोइंग इंडस्ट्रीज मेडिसिन यस फर्टिलाइजर्स यस टेक्सटाइल्स यस मोस्ट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रीज रिक्वायर मिनरल्स एंड दे आर द बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रीज सो थैंक यू वॉचिंग दिस लेसन Hey guys what's up so the lithosphere is broken into a number of plates known as the lithospheric plates these plates move around because of first is the movement of the molten magma inside the earth that is correct the rotational movement of the earth on its axis that is wrong earth is revolving around the sun that is also wrong so answer here is a one only so the plates move around very slowly just a few millimeters every day because of the movement of the molten magma inside the earth and this moves in a circular manner The forces which act in the interior of the Earth is called as endogenic forces. Endo means inside, genic means generated. So answer here is B two only. So the Earth movement are divided on the basis of the forces which causes them. The forces which act on the interior of the Earth they are called as the endogenic forces, and the forces which work on the surface of the Earth are called as the exogenic forces. Okay. So here B is two, and endogenic forces sometimes produce sudden movement. and the other time slow movements and gravitational force acts on the center of the earth they act on everywhere basically uh question number 23 consider the following statements uh sudden forces and diastrophic forces are called as exogenic forces so that is not correct erosional forces and depositional forces are endogenic forces that is also not correct so they have replaced it so sudden forces and diastrophic forces are endogenic forces sudden forces include earthquake volcano landslide diastrophic forces include building mountains etc and erosional forces and depositional forces are basically exogenic forces here it includes rivers wind sea waves glaciers etc question number 24 crater vent lava seismic waves magma chamber so which of the following are related to volcano seismic waves are related to earthquake rest all are related to volcano answer is d 1 2 3 volcano is a vent in the earth's crust through which molten material erupts suddenly magma chamber is the place where molten lava is stored crater is the mouth of volcano through which gases and ashes also comes out in the environment and seismic waves are the waves which originate during earthquake question number 25 with reference to the earthquakes consider the following statements the place in the crust where movement starts called the focus that is correct the place on the surface above the focus is called as epicenter so that is also correct and seismic waves radiate out in all the direction on the surface so answer is c all 1 2 3 So the lithospheric plates move. The surface of Earth vibrates. These vibrations can travel all around the Earth. They are called as earthquakes. They travel outwards from the epicenter as waves. Question number twenty-six. During the earthquakes, greatest damage is usually closest to the epicenter. That is correct. The strength of the earthquakes increases away from the epicenter. This is wrong. It falls. Some common earthquake predictions include studying animal behavior, fish in the pond getting agitated, snakes snakes coming out to the surface. Yes. Answer is B one and three. So the strength of the earthquake will decrease away from the epicenter, and you have some uh, ways to know whether the earthquake is coming or not. Question number twenty seven. Consider the following statements. An earthquake is measured with a machine called as Richter scale. Now earthquake is measured by a seismograph, and the magnitude of the earthquake is measured on Richter scale. So answer here is both of them are reversed. So answer here is D neither one nor two. So an earthquake is measured with a machine that is called as seismograph, and the magnitude of the earth is uh, earthquake is measured on the Richter scale. On Richter scale, an earthquake of 2.0 or less can be felt only a little, and an earthquake over 5 can cause damage from things falling. A 6 or higher magnitude is considered as very strong, and 7 is classified as a major earthquake. Question number 28. Consider the following statements. Okay. uh p waves are transverse waves this is wrong p waves are longitudinal waves s waves are transverse waves while l waves are surface waves so answer here is c 3 only so there are three types of earthquake waves p waves are longitudinal waves 
एस वेव्स और ट्रांसफर्स वेव्स एंड एल वेव्स और सरफेस वेव्स क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन एरोजन इज द ब्रेकिंग अप ऑफ द रॉक्स ऑन द सरफेस ऑफ द अर्थ दैट इज रॉन्ग वेदरिंग इज द वेयरिंग अवे ऑफ द लैंडस्केप बाई डिफरेंट एजेंट्स लाइक विंड एंड वाटर सो अगेन दीज आर रिवर्स डेयर सो वेदरिंग इज द ब्रेकिंग अप ऑफ द रॉक्स ऑन द अर्थ सर्फेस एंड एरोजन इज द वेयरिंग अवे ऑफ द लैंडस्केप बाय डिफरेंट एजेंट्स लाइक विंड वाटर एक्सेट्रा एंड लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर दिस लेसन एंजल फॉल्स आर इन वेनेजुएला दैट इज करेक्ट विक्टोरिया फॉल्स आर इन जाम्बिया दैट इज करेक्ट Niagara Falls in Mexico that is wrong that is located in USA and U- Canada border so the Angel Falls is the highest waterfall in the world located in Venezuela Victoria Falls is located on the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe and Niagara Falls is located on the border between Canada and USA in the North America so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss these questions which of the following are agents of erosion and deposition answer here is d all of the above winds glaciers sea waves river all of these are agents of erosion and deposition so in deserts wind is an active agent of erosion and deposition and glaciers are rivers of ice which erode the landscape by bulldozing soil and stones to expose the solid rocks below and erosion and deposition of the sea waves gives rise to coastal landforms and running water in river erodes the landscape so answer here is d all of the above Which of the following are features made up by river in a flood plain? Oxbow Lake, meander, leaves. So answer here is D. One, two, three. All these statements are correct. So as the river enters in the plain, it twists and turns, forming large bands known as meanders. And due to continuous erosion and deposition along the sides of the meanders, the ends of the meander loops come closer and closer. And in due course of time, the loops cut off from the river and form a cut-off lake, which is also called as an oxbow lake. In the raised banks and flood plains, they are called as leaves or levees. Uh, question number thirty-three: uh, As the river approaches the sea, the speed of water increases. This is wrong. The speed of water decreases, and it begins to break down into a number of streams called as tributaries. As the river approaches the sea, it begins to break into a number of streams called as tributaries. So this is also wrong. The collection of sediments of all the tributaries in the mouth at the mouth forms a delta of river. That is correct. So answer is C three only. Question number thirty-four: Which of the following features are made by sea waves? Uh, sea caves, stacks, beaches, sea arches, sea cliffs—all the above. Answer here is D. So sea waves continuously strike the rocks. Thus, over the time, hollow, the uh, like caves are formed on the rocks. They are called as sea caves. As these cavities become bigger, so only the roof of the cave remains, thus forming sea arch. And further erosion breaks the roof, and only the walls are left. So these are called as stacks. And steep, rocky, rising almost vertically above sea water is called as sea cliff. and the sea waves deposit sediments along the shores and over time they form beaches question number 35 mushroom rocks are formed by the erosion of the rocks by the winds that is correct sand dunes are created by deposition of sands by the running water uh, that statement is wrong and uh, this is because of the wind blowing when very fine and light grains of sand is deposited in large area it is called as loess so large deposits are found in china so answer is c1 and 3 So it is because of the wind blowing. Question number thirty-six: The depositional feature of a glacier are a river valleys, not uh, their ravages, the not moraines. So answer is C three only. So glaciers carve out the deep hollows as the ice melts. They get filled up with water. They become beautiful lakes in the mountains, and the material is carried by the glaciers get deposited, and they form moraines. Question number thirty-seven: Without the atmosphere. The Earth would get heated during the day and get frozen during the night. That is correct. The air in the atmosphere has made the temperature on the Earth livable. That is also correct. Answer is C, both one and two. So our Earth is surrounded by a huge blanket of air, which is called as atmosphere, and all living being depends on it for their survival. The air in atmosphere is basically a mixture of many gases, and some gases are very important for life on the Earth. Question number thirty-eight: What is the correct sequence of occurrence of gases in the atmosphere? So it is nitrogen, then followed by oxygen, then followed by argon. So these three forms almost hundred percent. Rest all are absolutely negligible. Nitrogen is seventy eight percent, oxygen is twenty one percent, argon is roughly point nine five percent. Then you have carbon dioxide and point zero three percent. All other combined together is point zero four percent. So answer is one two three four five. Okay, so it is a no brainer. Please remember this. Question number thirty nine. Carbon dioxide creates a greenhouse effect by tapping the heat radiated from the Earth. That is correct. Uh, decrease in the level of carbon dioxide in atmosphere is the major cause of global warming. 
नो इट इज इंक्रीज तो आंसर इट इज ए वन ओनली तो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज अ ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज बट वैन इट्स लेवल इन एटमोसफेयर इंक्रीजेज ड्यू टू स्मोक एंड फ्यूम्स द हीट रिटेन इंक्रीजेज द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द अर्थ एंड कॉजेज ऑफ ग्लोबल वार्मिंग एंड क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर द कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ द राइज इन टेम्परेचर ऑफ द अर्थ मेल्टिंग ऑफ द स्नो इन द कोल्डेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज करेक्ट राइजिंग ऑफ द सी लेवल इज करेक्ट फ्रीक्वेंट फ्लड्स एंड कोस्टल एरियाज इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट ड्रास्टिक चेंज इन क्लाइमेट एक्सटेंशन ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स ऑल करेक्ट एंड इंक्रीजिंग ऑफ पास्टर लैंड इज रॉन्ग द राइज इन टेम्परेचर डज नॉट इंक्रीज द एरिया ऑफ पास्टर लैंड बट मे डिक्रीज इट सो आंसर एर इज ए वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव द फर्स्ट फाइव आर डेफिनेटली करेक्ट बट द राइज इन टेम्परेचर डज नॉट इंक्रीज द एरिया ऑफ पास्टर लैंड बट इट मे डिक्रीज इन स्टेड ओके सो थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस लेसन हे गाइज वॉट्सअप सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग क्लास सेवेंथ जोग्राफी एन सी आर टी एंड वी ऑलरेडी कवर द फर्स्ट फोर्टी क्वेश्चन वेट आउट ऑफ इट आई ट्राई टू कवर टू हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन इन दिस एंड इवेंचुअली दैन वी विल फिनिश ऑफ द एंटायर एन सी आर टी यूजिंग दिस मॉड्यूल सो हाउ डू यू बेस्ट यूटिलाइज दिस सो हाउ डू यू बेस्ट यूटिलाइज दिस इज द वेज दैट यू गो थ्रू ऑल दीज एक्सप्लेनेशन डिटेल्ड एक्सप्लेनेशन विच यू हैव प्रोवाइडेड एंड देन यू सॉल्व ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन ऑन योर ओन एंड ट्राई टू मेमोराइज द एक्सप्लेनेशन मेमोराइज द ऑप्शन वाई इज वन करेक्ट वाई इज नॉट वन करेक्ट एंड देन यू ओपन योर एन सी आर टी एंड क्विकली रिवाइज इट दैट इज द बेस्ट वे बट इफ यू डोंट हैव टाइम टू ओपन दी एन सी आर टी दैट ऑल्सो वर्कस सो हेयर सो बेसिकली इन दिस वे यू कैन यूटिलाइज दिस मॉड्यूल इन द बेस्ट पॉसिबल मैनर सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ऑप्शन वन इज दैट ग्रीन प्लांट्स प्रोड्यूस ऑक्सीजन एंड नाइट्रोजन ड्यूरिंग फोटोसिंथेसिस See this option is absolutely absurd since class sixth we have been like listening that they will produce oxygen and they will consume carbon dioxide they will make environment a better place so nitrogen is already seventy nine percent who needs them to produce nitrogen right anyway they are nitrogen deficient if they can produce so much nitrogen then why they need nitrogen fertilizers and nitrogen fixing bacteria so this statement is absolutely absurd and that is how I want you to think in the UPSC exam hall that this statement is actually absurd. this cannot be true second is oxygen content in the air remains constant yes you can say that it is more or less constant it is around just slightly less than 21% unless something drastically happens in a room it might change but overall in the earth it will remain the same but over a millennia it can change over millions of years it can change so oxygen is the second most plentiful gas in the atmosphere first is nitrogen 78% oxygen is roughly roughly less than 21% then you have argon 0.95% then you have co2.03% and rest all is very very minuscule and less water vapor can vary hugely living beings take the oxygen from the air as they breathe now green plants produce oxygen during the photosynthesis and in this way the oxygen content which is taken in by the animals and plants for respiration is compensated through the photosynthesis so the oxygen content in the air remains the constant and if we cut trees then this balance get disturbed when we inhale we take some amount of nitrogen into the lungs and exhale it but plants need nitrogen for their survival and they do not produce it during the photosynthesis so this part is absolutely clear that uh, plants need nitrogen for their survival otherwise for example if plants are growing in nitrogen deficient state then they even start to resorting to eat insects these are called as insectivorous plants just to tell you that plants cannot produce nitrogen on their own so it, i think the concept is 100% clear now question number 42 consider the following statements the air gets expanded when it heated and become lighter and goes up yes you can do this experiment right now so the hotter air will always uh, always go up okay just try to enlighten an agarbatti and you see that the fumes because they are hot they will slide they'll go up they'll not go down this like otherwise through gravity they should go down right but when air is heated it will expand it will become lighter and it goes up on the other hand try to do it to the cold air also it will not rise it will be denser and it will be heavy and it tends to sink down because of its weight so answer here is yes both these statements are absolutely correct so when you heat an air it expands it becomes lighter and it goes up Well, on the other hand cold air is much denser and heavy and that is why it tends to sink down and when hot air rises the cold air from the surrounding area rushes there to fill in the gap and so basically hot air will rise like this it will continue rising so cold air air will come like this and that is how the circulation of the air will continue and this is called as the air circulation very very basic geography 
Green plants use nitrogen to make their food and release oxygen. This is wrong. Green plants do not use nitrogen to make their food. Green plants use nitrogen to make proteins which is required for any living beings. Forget about plants. It is required for you, me, rat, mice, everybody. They use carbon dioxide to make their food because carbon based food banayenge na. They make star, they make glucose, etc. So answer here is this is definitely wrong. Living beings releases carbon dioxide through the process of respiration. Yes, this is hundred percent correct. So answer is B two only. So green plants use carbon dioxide to make their food and release oxygen, and humans or animals will release carbon dioxide through the process of respiration. Okay. And the amount of carbon dioxide which is released by humans or animals, it seems to be equal to the amount which is used by the plants, which make a perfect balance. It has to be a perfect balance, right? If it goes in the like not in equilibrium, then everybody of us will die. All the plants will die. All the humans will die. All the animals will die. Everybody will die. So the balance is upset by burning of fuels such as coal and air, and they add billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere each year. Eventually, this is going to catch up with us, and trust me, it will not be good when the global warming hits and when it is 400 uh, carbon reaches that 400 mark. Which of the following is are not the layers of the atmosphere? Troposphere is 0 to 10 kilometer, 0 to 18 kilometer depends on whether you are in equator or poles. Stratosphere is basically 50 kilometers, 10 to 50 kilometers. Mesosphere is basically 50 to 80 kilometers. Thermosphere is 80 to 400 kilometers. Exosphere is beyond 400 kilometers till the space starts. So all these are layers of atmosphere. Answer is D. None of the above. So our atmosphere is basically divided into five layers. Then there are like thermosphere as ionosphere, stratosphere as ozonosphere. So there are different layers within layers. So you don't have to worry about it. Just have a basic understanding. Question number forty-five. Consider the following statements. All the weather phenomena occurs in the stratosphere. What are you talking about? All the weather phenomena occurs in the troposphere. The first ten kilometers or the first eighteen kilometers again depends. The tropopause length varies from like eight to eighteen kilometers depending on whether you are on equator or poles. The air we breathe exists in the troposphere. That is correct, sir. So answer here is B two only. So troposphere is a very very important layer of the atmosphere, and all the weather phenomena like rainfall, fog, hail, storm occurs in the troposphere. The air we breathe also exists in the troposphere. Question number forty six: The stratosphere has the most ideal conditions for flying aeroplanes. That is correct because there are no weather like phenomena. It also contains a layer of ozone gas. I've already told you. Yes. So answer is C, both one and two. So it is free from the clouds associated weather phenomena and makes the condition most ideal for flying aeroplanes here. And one important feature of stratosphere is that it contains a layer of ozone gas, and the ozone layer protects us from the harmful effects of the sun rays. Question number forty-seven: Meteorites burns up in the thermosphere on entering from the space. That is wrong. They burns up in the mesosphere on entering from the space. In thermosphere, temperature rises very rapidly with decreasing height. This is wrong. Temperature rises very rapidly with increasing height, and this layer also helps in radio transmission. Just remember this word. And radio radio is transmitted from the Earth are reflected back to Earth by this layer. Uh, question number forty eight: Stratosphere, ionosphere. This is wrong. Stratosphere has ozone layer and flying aeroplanes. Uh, thermosphere is ionosphere. Troposphere is air we breathe. Mesosphere is meteorites and exosphere have light gases. So only the fifth one is matched correctly, and you can read it here. Question number forty nine: The ionosphere is part of the thermosphere. That is correct. Helium and hydrogen float into the space from exosphere. That is also correct. So answer is both of them are correct. So exosphere are light gases like helium and hydrogen, and ionosphere is between eighty to four hundred kilometers. Question number fifty: Climate can change dramatically day to day in a short period. No, that is weather. Climate is overall the same. The average climatic conditions of a place for a long time is known as weather. This is wrong. The weather, average weather, is called as the climate. So answer here is D. Neither one nor two. So thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So I hope you have enjoyed the first fifty MCQs because trust me, it will help you in building your like concepts and everything which you study in geography, environment, ecology. See, everything will stem from these questions, and if you like solve them properly, then definitely you are going places. So the degree of hotness and coldness of the air is known as temperature. That is absolutely. Uh, in correct that is absolutely correct and insulation is the incoming solar energy intercepted by the earth insulation full form is basically incoming solar radiation insolation in is incoming solar is solar 
ऐशन इज रेडियशन सो आंसर एर सी बोथ वन एंड टू सो दि टेमपरेचर वी फील एवरी डे इज दि टेमपरेचर ऑफ दि एटमोस्फेयर एंड इट चेंज इज नॉट ओनली बिटवीन डे एंड नाइट इट आलसो चेंज फ्रॉम स सीजन टू सीजन एंड समर्स आर मच हॉटर्स दैन विंटर्स एंड एन इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर दैट इन्फ्लुएंस इज द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ टेम्परेचर इज इंसोलेशन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी टू थर्मोमीटर इज टेम्परेचर दैट इज करेक्ट रेन गॉज इज द अमाउंट ऑफ रेनफॉल दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट बैरोमीटर बैरोमीटर बेसिकली इज प्रेशर एटमोसफेयर स्पीड ऑफ विंड कैन बी मेजर्ड बाय अनिमोमीटर विंड वेन विंड वेन इज फॉर डायरेक्शन ऑफ विंड दैट इज करेक्ट स्पीड ऑफ विंड इज बाय अनिमोमीटर अनिमोम इज लैटन ग्रीक वर्ड फॉर एयर और विंड आंसर इज सी वन टू फोर so the correct matching of the given pairs will include thermometer is temperature measurement of temperature can be done by thermometer rain gauge is by amount of rainfall barometer is by atmospheric pressure wind vane is by direction of wind and anemometer is basically a device which is used to measure the speed of the winds okay question number 53 the temperature decreases from equator towards the pole ऑब्वियसली यस द मैक्सिमम टेम्परेचर इज एट इक्वेटर एवरीबडी नोज इट यार पोल्स पर मिनिमम होता है इक्वेटर पर मैक्सिमम होता है बिकॉज द इंसोलेशन इज मैक्सिमम एट द इक्वेटर दैट इज वाई द इक्वेटोरियल टेम्परेचर इज द हाइएस्ट इन द वर्ल्ड एंड दे आर हाइएस्ट थ्रू आउट द ईयर एवरी डे डे नाइट एवरी टाइम इट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी सिक्स डिग्री सेल्सियस थर्टी थ्री डिग्री सेल्सियस नॉन स्टॉप देर इज नो विंटर देर इज नो समर देर इज नो स्प्रिंग देर इज नो ऑटम देर इज नो सीजन टेम्परेचर इन सिटीज इज मच हायर दैन द विलेज दैट इज करेक्ट they are called as urban heat islands and uh, this question can be asked in your mains exam so answer here is c both one and two so the amount of insulation decreases from equator towards the poles therefore temperature decreases in the same manner and it is the major reason why the poles are covered with snow all the time and at equator is the hottest place on the earth just go to kenya and like uh, go for 5 6 days so temperature in cities is much higher than the villages because the concrete and metals in buildings and the asphalts of roads get heated up during the day this heat is released during the night and also the crowded high rise buildings of the cities trap the warm air and thus uh, raise the temperature of the cities question number 54 consider the following statements the standard unit of the temperature is fahrenheit uh, standard unit is basically degree celsius but if you want to like uh, uh, si unit then it is fahrenheit The freezing point of water is minus one hundred degree Celsius. What are you talking about? It is zero degree Celsius. It is not minus one hundred degree. Minus one hundred degree Celsius, but everything will freeze. Like most of the things, not everything. Okay. So answer here is D. Neither one nor two. So the standard unit of measuring the temperature is degree Celsius. Informally, it is known as degree centigrade. Other units are Fahrenheit and Kelvin. Kelvin is the SI unit. Okay. and on the celsius scale the water freezes at 0 degree celsius it boils at 100 degree celsius we keep it 0 degree celsius because water freezes at 0 degree celsius okay we have invented that scale kelvin scale is by our creators or whoever created the universe he said that 0 kelvin is minimum so we follow his scale but celsius is for our own convenience question number 55 consider the following statements the pressure exerted by the weight of the air on the earth surface is known as air pressure that is correct air presses our body from all directions and our body exerts a counter pressure yes you have to we have to wear special protective space suits otherwise if you go to space outside you will just burst every blood vessel will burst in your body okay so answer here is uh, c both one and two so the pressure exerted by the weight of the air on the earth surface is known as air pressure and on the moon there is no air hence there is no air pressure and astronaut have to wear special protective space suits filled with air when they go to the moon and air presses our body from all the directions and our body exerts a counter pressure question number 56 the air pressure is the lowest at sea level and decreases with height uh, this is wrong the air pressure is highest at sea level and decreases with height so this is wrong the air always moves from high pressure area to lower pressure area that is correct so answer here is b to only so as we go up the layers of the atmosphere the pressure will fall rapidly and air pressure is highest at sea level and decreases with height and horizontally the distribution of air pressure is influenced by the temperature of air at given place and the air always moves from high pressure areas to the low pressure area so that is correct um question number 57 low pressure is basically associated with uh, cloudy skies and wet weather uh, yes this is correct 
high pressure is associated with clearance and skies so both these statements are correct so in areas where temperature is high the air gets heated and rises this creates a low pressure zone and low pressure is associated with cloudy skies wet weather etc and in areas having lower temperature the air is cold and it is therefore heavy and heavy air sinks and creates a high pressure zone and high pressure is basically associated with uh, clear and sunny skies so this is basic physics this is not even geography this is basic physics question number 58 the movement of air uh, from high pressure area to low pressure area is called as the wind so yeah that is correct the wind blowing to the west is called as westerly no 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 this is wrong wind blowing uh, like the direction it is important so wind blowing uh, it is named after the direction from which it blows okay so this is wrong so answer here is a one only so in other words blowing air is called as wind and wind is named after the direction from which it blows not to it blows it is the origin not the destination hence wind blowing from west is called as westerly and not to west samajh rahe ho na so if it is blowing from the north it is called as northerly samajh rahe ho if it is blowing from the south it is called as southerly if it is blowing from the west it is called as westerly if it is blowing from the east it is called as easterly and so on and so forth question number 59 which of the following is the correct sequence of the wind system from the equator to the pole north uh, uh, northeast southeast trade winds tropic of cancer uh, so yes so it is 1 2 and 3 since it is asking from equator to pole so the trade winds are around equator tropic of cancer and capricorn ke beech mein hoti hain prevailing westerlies are between subtropical high pressure north and south and polar easterlies are subpolar low pressure north and south so answer here is a 1 2 3 and you can read more about it here last question for the day is which of the following is are not the type of winds permanent winds yes it is a type of winds seasonal winds there is no country winds local winds are basically land breeze and sea breeze seasonal winds includes monsoon so answer is c three only so winds can be broadly divided into three types permanent winds includes trade winds easterlies and westerlies seasonal winds includes monsoon winds in india local winds includes land and sea breeze there is no any type of country winds and uh, winds which originate within the physical boundary of a country is considered as seasonal winds or local winds so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so we are discussing the class 7th ncert and we will discuss the mcqs which are very much relevant for this exam uh, and uh, this will cover the most of the ncert and with detailed explanation that you do not need to read it okay so let's get started with question number 61 to 70 so permanent winds blows constantly throughout the year in a particular direction yes this statement is absolutely correct seasonal winds change their direction in different seasons so yes that is also correct example monsoons in india local winds blow only during a particular period of the day or year in a small area so that is also correct so answer is c 1 2 3 all these statements are correct so some examples of these winds includes permanent winds which are trade winds easterlies and westerlies then you have seasonal winds for example monsoons in india then you have local winds for example lu chinook etc so answer is c 1 2 3 uh, question number 62 consider the following statements humidity is the moisture in the air at any time yes that is correct clouds are masses of water droplets in the atmosphere so that is also correct so answer is c uh, both 1 and 2 both these statements are absolutely correct so let's dive deep so when water evaporate from land and different water bodies it becomes water vapor and so quantity of uh, water in the atmosphere is known as humidity and when the air is full of water vapor it is called a humid day because you feel your sweat does not evaporate and you feel very very humid and the water vapor condenses causing formation of water droplets and clouds are huge masses of uh, including lots of such water droplets Question number sixty-three. As the air gets warmer, its capacity to hold the water vapor decreases. Now, as you increase the temperature, the capacity will increase. This is the general principle throughout the chemistry. Uh, when the air gets cool, it can retain more quantity of water vapor. Obviously, if it gets cool, then the water will not be able, like they will not be able to hold it, 
and if you cool down the saturated vapor or uh, air then water vapor will come out as water droplets so answer here is d neither one nor two so as the air gets warmer and warmer its capacity to hold the water vapor will increase and so it becomes more and more humid and when the water vapor rises it starts to cool down and when the air gets cool it cannot retain more quantity of water vapor so that point is absolutely clear now the water vapor condenses and it causes the formation of droplet of water and when these when these droplets of water becomes too heavy to float in the air then they come down as precipitation in the form of rain and there are so many other meaning uh, versions question number 64 on a humid day uh, clothes take longer to dry and sweat from our body does not evaporate easily and it makes us feel very uncomfortable so which of the following is the reason for this so you feel bad because uh, the moisture has increased so answer is c so as the air gets warmer and warmer its capacity to hold the water vapor increases and it becomes more and more and more humid and therefore the moisture in the atmosphere also increases and similarly when jet planes which fly in the sky they leave a white trail behind them so the moisture from their engine will condense so we see trails of this condensed moisture for some time so answer here is c that is moisture increases uh, question number 65 consider the following statements uh, precipitation that comes down to the earth in the liquid form is called as rain yes absolutely correct uh, most of the ground water uh, comes from the rain water so that is also correct so answer here is c both one and two so rainfall is very very important for survival of plants and animals because it brings lot of fresh water which is required to the earth surface question number 66 which of the following are the types of rainfall so on the basis of mechanism uh, one is the convectional rainfall so that is correct then you have orographic rainfall so that is also correct and you have cyclonic rainfall there is no surface rainfall so answer here becomes c that is 1 2 so on the basis of mechanism there are three types of rainfall convectional rainfall orographic rainfall cyclonic rainfall and other forms of precipitation are snow sleet hail etc okay uh, question number 67 which of the following is the process uh, by which water continually changes its form and circulated between oceans atmosphere and land so that process is called as d that is water cycle so that is absolutely correct so the process by which water continually changes in its form and gets circulated between oceans atmosphere and land that process is called as water cycle and sun's heat will cause the evaporation of water vapor and when the water vapor cools down it will condense and it will form the clouds and from there it will fall on the land or sea as precipitation and therefore evaporation condensation precipitation are the parts of the water cycle basically different parts of the water cycle question number 68 our earth is like a terrarium which of the following explains the meaning of terrarium so it is an artificial enclosure for keeping small house plants so answer here is a so that is what you mean by a terrarium so it is an artificial enclosure for keeping small house plants so our earth is like a terrarium only and uh, it is an artificial enclosure for keeping small house plants and the sealed enclosure combined with the heat entering the terrarium allows for the creation of a small scale water cycle and therefore the same water that existed centuries ago still exists today it is basically just being uh, circulated that is all that is going on okay question number 69 which of the following are the sources of fresh water so river is definitely one source of fresh water then you have ponds so that is also there then you have springs so that is definitely a source of fresh water glaciers are also a source of fresh water uh, sea is not a source of fresh water so answer here is c that is 1 2 3 4 uh, c is definitely not a source of sea water so the major sources of fresh water are rivers ponds springs glaciers and ocean bodies and sea contains a lot of salty water uh, it is called as marine uh, system and they are heavily saline water they are not fresh water they are not drinkable potable at all at any like any stretch of imagination you cannot drink it rather if you are lost in sea then it is advised if you are marooned in sea then it is advised you should not drink your sea water 
and uh, because it contains large amount of dissolved water and it can like really destroy our bodily functions and water cycle replenishes the fresh water on the lands so that statement is also correct so salinity is the amount of salt in grams present in 1000 grams of uh, water that is correct the average salinity of the ocean is 45 parts per thousand now average salinity is about uh, 3.3% or 35 parts per thousand okay so it is roughly about that mark 3.3 percent so if you take 100 grams of water you will find 3 grams of salt the so average salinity of the ocean is not 45 it is of dead sea so answer here is a that is one only so the average salinity of the ocean is 35 parts per thousand so dead sea has 45 parts per thousand and swimmers can float in it because it is very very dense so thank you for watching this lesson